Hi, it's Martin and Arlo, and we're here on almost week three of self-isolation up here in Vermont. And today we're going to make, um, we're going to make challah. And challah, when I say challah, I think of the traditional three-strand braided loaf, seeded sometimes, sometimes not. Um, but what I also think of are all of the different variations that we can do with that basic dough, which are delicious. Um, so the recipe today is the classic challah off of the website, classic challah. And if you just Google King Arthur classic challah, um, you'll find it very quickly. Um, so let's just jump into it. Arlo, will you egg wash these things which have risen? And I'm gonna actually take one second to talk about our starter. So come over here, Anthem. So a week ago, we started a starter. Um, I've had one going for a long time, um, but I thought everybody else is doing it. Why don't I start a new one and just see how it goes along? Um, and so I just added to about 25 grams of um, starter, which is doing really well, in fact, so well that I think I could actually make bread with this tomorrow. So in about a week, you should be pretty much up and running um, and so I'm just giving a feed and a feed is like a refreshment. It's, um, giving the yeast and bacteria that are in here, basically water and food. And then I just use, I like using a, a knife to stir and I'm just using like a jam jar. And that's about it. I use a rubber band to show me basically the level of where it was when I fed. And then one of the measures of activity or health that I can use is how it expands volumetrically. And so I can just follow it. Very handy. Um, top on, leave it someplace moderately warm. Should we do all these? Yeah, do all those and you can bring them over here actually. Whoa, where'd you go? <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> We did a little, you did like a do-si-do -si -do move. I don't know what, that was good though. You're better dancer than me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, just like in the other videos, we kind of have to go out of order a little bit just to make sure that we're able to show you everything. Did you get everybody? Nope. Those guys are good. What else did, did you get? I only got the hot dogs. You only got the hot dogs. Hot dogs look good. Um, I started on these. You started on these. Let me just give them a little bit and I'm just gonna move through it relatively quickly. Um, these are some rolls. I'm going to show you how to shape them. Uh, there's really nothing fancy here. I said that hollow is versatile, and I mean it's wicked versatile. It's a really good dough when you're at home because you can do sweet things and you can do savory things. Uh, you can get like a full meal out of hollow, or you could just eat a loaf and have that be the full meal. Um, That's definitely true. During the final rise, I've been I have um, egg washed these a little bit because they were drying out just a little bit in the oven. And so I sort of helped to prevent them from egg washing or from drying by applying some egg wash. Um, when you egg wash, come in here for a second, Anthem. Um, when you egg wash, make sure to get this low edge right where it meets the sheet tray. Get that low edge. Often, or sometimes I'll see hollow, which hasn't been egg washed really thoroughly. Um, this loaf is going to expand and sort of come up as it bakes and we want to make sure and get egg wash everywhere because um, It looks better like that Okay, you don't have to seed this um, But you can and I really like it seeded. We have some sesame seeds uh, We could just do plain sesame seeds. You can do plain poppy seeds. I have this everything bagel topping which mm -hmm. I the other day tried and um, really it was really good. It was really, really good. Um, and so uh, I'm still using that. I got a little low, so I added some more plain sesame and a little bit of onion flake and some poppy seeds to it. Um, and you could, you know, you can sprinkle with your fingers. What I would say is just make sure that you're heavy, you know, make sure that you really generously seed the holla. And if you, um, if you egg wash it, the seeds will adhere. Okay, so that's the holla. I'm gonna set it aside because that'll go in the oven in a second. I guess maybe I'll talk for just one second um, about the level of proof. Now, look here. 
this is really well proofed. If it's not really well proofed and it bakes, what you'll notice is that there will be this sort of shredding in where the pleats are, in where the braids are. They'll sort of break open a little bit. And what I want is it for, for it to stretch but not shred. And so it's really well proofed. The final proof on hollow may be, you know, 75 to 120 minutes. Um, and how do I know when it's ready? It feels very pillowy. Feel that, Arlo. Whoa, it's like... It feels like an inner tube almost, right? That's not pumped up all the way. Like if I pushed yeah. it hard with my finger, the impression would remain. So it's really well proofed. And that's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. So I'm going to apply some... I'll sprinkle some herbs on, and then will you grate a considerable amount of the cheese, of this dried cheese on there? I'm just so going to reach. Do it right now? I'm going to put the herbs on first, I think. Maybe I'll put a little bit on now, and then I'll go again afterwards. This is just uh, some herbs that I put in the mortar and pestle. It's fresh rosemary, uh, and then chili flakes, ground pepper, and what else did I put in there? Uh, Heavier than that. Keep going. Make it like you want to eat it. Now we're talking, that looks good. That's gonna be really good, right? Definitely. You can almost like smell those coming out of the oven already. <laughs> you could do anything you wanted on there. You could put um, dried basil, you could do oregano. Um, man, you could go a hundred different directions, but I think that looks pretty darn good. I think a little bit more of the herb on top, what do you think? Yeah, definitely, that'd be great. So again, that was just fresh rosemary that I ground up. Um, with thyme. pepper and thyme and chili flakes too, right? Chili flakes. Okay, so there are those. And then the last thing are these hot dog buns, and we're going to show you how to do those in just a minute. Um, but again, really, really well proofed. Just absolutely like light as air, like they're little dough clouds almost, right? Yeah, they <laughs> Okay. So will you load those for me? Put the two trays on the upper rack and then put the hollow on the lower rack, I think. Yeah. So, ah. It's hot. You got it. It's a little hot. That rack might be a little high, but it'll be okay. Those two on the top. The rolls I'm going to watch, they'll probably be about 15 minutes. There you go. And you want to do the hollow? You got it? I think so. I think you got it. Should I put it in sideways like this? Yeah, put it in sideways. Good. Push it all the way back. Perfect. Okay. Timer? Timer, yeah. Why don't you, for the smaller rolls, for the hot dogs and the, those herb cheese rolls, probably, we're looking at 14 probably. Let's start with 14. You can't take back time, you know? Yeah. Can't turn it back. Okay. So, while those work, um, we're going to do the divide and pre-shape, and then we'll go back, and uh, we're sort of staging things. I think I have four different batches of hollow going today, just to get it to where I can sort of show you guys everything. Okay, um, this dough is ready to divide. Come in here, Anthem, and I'll show you. Um, do you remember how that proofed loaf felt? How, how almost like air-filled it felt? And... Um, almost like a balloon that's not yeah. inflated quite all the way. This is the same way, it's fluffy. The, the recipe instructions say fluffy, right? I think it says fluffy on it, which is a great, oh, it, puffy, sorry, puffy, not fluffy, puffy. <laughs> and it is puffy, right? It yeah, feels definitely. very puffy. Um, and what I found today uh, in our house was that this is scheduled to have two and a half, two hours of fermentation after the mix, so what we call bulk fermentation or um, the rise. Um, it, it was scheduled for two hours. I felt like it needed a little bit more than that um, because it's a little chilly in here today. And when we get to the mix, I'm going to tell you how to, um, I'm going to show you how to make sure that the dough moves at a rate which uh, helps us to divide around two, two and a half hours. Um, I've said this before, but Often in the home environment, the thing that bakers miss, home bakers of bread or yeasted products, oftentimes um, you don't give enough fermentation. And the way that we control the rate of fermentation is through the temperature of the dough. So uh, we'll talk about some of those additional things during our um, mix. But for now, there is that. Um, this isn't a full batch. I pulled off a portion just so that I wouldn't have, um, we've got enough challah 
I think we're going to have plenty of hala for ourselves and for our neighbors as well. Um, so, uh, what I want to do is show you what, um, get my scale. Can you set that over there for me, pretty please? Thank you, buddy. Um, I'm going to show you how to divide and free shape. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to show you all the shapes. Yeah, I'm going to show some shapes. So let me show you the pre-shape first because, okay, on the recipe, you go from this divide pretty much straight to the final shape. That's one way to do it, and it's a good way to do it. My experience um, in production uh, places a very high value on how even and beautiful the hala is. The one that you divide and shape immediately will be very flavorful and often beautiful. The one, in my experience, that I divide and then pre-shape and then let relax and give the final shape um, is a little bit more uniform when I shape it. I do a little bit better job. Uh, and even after a lot of years of shaping that, I still um, I need that step in between, and I'll show you why. Okay, so for the hala, I'm doing um, strands which are 186 grams and I'm going to show you two of those and then maybe I'll show you a roll as well even though it's kind of the same thing. Let's see how many I have here left. 145 so let's do two at 70. 70 and 70. Okay so if I were to go from this form directly into braids, it's going to be hard, right? Yeah. Because it's hard to take that shape and make a long, even rope out of it, right? And that's really what I need to do, is to make a long, even rope out of that. Okay, so what I do first is I, I make a pre-shape, and you've seen me do this with some other things too. Okay, so here's the pre-shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little short tube. Okay, so I bring the sides in and I pat it down to degas. And then I make this shape, which you have seen before. Definitely, just, yeah. You've definitely seen that, right? A little tube. Yeah. Okay. And so now if I let that relax a little bit, when I go to make my final shape, you can see how I would have a long tube that's much more even, right? And if I have a long, even tube there, when I go to do my braid, I have a much more beautiful, even, symmetrical local pile, right? Okay, awesome. So, do you want to do, why don't you do that one? Wait, so you fold? So, pat it. So, let's do it side by side. Pat it. You can be kind of aggressive if you want to knock the air out of it. Yep, yep. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, Bring the sides in, and you'll recognize this is the same way that I show shape like a sandwich loaf, too. It's kind of the same process. Okay, so I bring the sides in, pat it down. Yep, and you want to make sure it's really square. So, see how that kind of juts out right there? Get that oh, sucker in there. Everything. Everything squared up. Yeah, 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 like that. See how now we have kind of this rectangle? Yep. Yep, okay. So, once we have the rectangle, then we come down from the top. Seal and press away. Oh, good job. Come down from the top, seal and press away. Yours is looking better than mine. Down and seal and press away. Till you get to the bottom, give it a little roll. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, it's coming apart, I kind of. It's okay. So if it's coming apart a little bit, do you remember that, that trick with the heel of your palm? Yeah. And just smush it right down there. Exactly, that's perfect. Look how square, okay. So that's perfect. Do you see how that that says I want to be something that's long and even. You know what I mean? Yep. That's you're already you're heading in the direction. That's perfect. Okay, do that one. And I'm gonna move over here and start looking down the road. Okay. So uh, uh, this one's not wide. Yeah. Okay. So look, if you don't like it going that way, I mean you could stretch it some and make it go that way. There you go. You you tell it what to do. Yeah, I like that. That's good. And then press it flat to seal. It's getting a little narrow on you, but watch, watch. It's okay. And now come down from the top and I'll show you how we can fix that. It's gonna be fine. Yep, seal and press away, wait. So you come down, seal and press away. Watch this move right here. Come down, 
press away. Okay. okay. And one more time. There you go, good. And then how do you make it long like that one? Watch. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, now. So now over here, I have my pre-shaped pieces. So I'm just gonna swap them out. Take these guys over here. The reason I have these pre-shaped in advance is because if we try and go straight from this form, which we just added some strength to, um, it's not going to come back. It's gonna, I mean, it is gonna come back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if we try and stretch that right now, it's gonna be like playing a rubber band. It's gonna be rrr, 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 coming back. So you don't want that. Um, so give it some time to relax. That goes for pizza dough, it goes for a lot of things where you're trying to take a piece of dough and then stretch it. Um, just let it relax. Can I okay. smell those rolls in the oven? Yeah, the rolls smell good, don't they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was looking at that squirrel outside. That was a big squirrel was like right next to the window. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't get distracted. Okay. So, let's see. What do I need to shape? I was going to shape a hot dog. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do, uh, maybe we'll do a pretzel too. I thought maybe yeah, a pretzel that'd shape. Good, that'd yeah. be cool, huh? Okay. So this is the thing is you can do all sorts of things with hollow dough. We could, we could um, take uh, maybe the entire batch of dough and then roll it out into a big rectangle. We could sprinkle it pretty heavily with brown sugar and then a lot of cinnamon and we can roll it up and then you can cut segments just like you would for cinnamon rolls. So yes, you can use Hala for um, cinnamon rolls. You can make little round rolls and bake them for dinner. There are a million uses. Okay, so I was going to show you that little coil roll. Did you see how I did that? No. You didn't see how I did that? Okay, all right. So these are 70 gram pieces. 70 gram pieces, uh, you know, two and a half ounces, somewhere in the range of two and a half ounces. Okay, so for that coil roll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be patient. This is the thing with hollow. It's a strong dough, and you just have to be patient. Wait for it to stretch. You can only sort of elongate it at the rate at which it wants to um, stretch. Play along exactly at the rate at which it wants us to wants to stretch exactly right. Okay. So I try and make it even end to end. Um, everybody is one hand dominant for the most part. And oftentimes you apply more pressure with your dominant hand as opposed to your non-dominant. So um, that's what I have to watch and have for years now. Okay. So if you want to do that little coil roll, will you bring me this little... Uh, will you just hold that for a second? Sorry to make you have the most boring job. Okay. So this is the little coil. I'm going to show you how to do that thing. So I just start at one end with a scraper. And I just cut about halfway or so across the piece of dough with a bench knife, bench scraper. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put this guy down. So what I do is um, there's really nothing fancy going on here, but I just make sort of a little circle and then I just twirl it around and bring it together. And as it proofs, those um, marks where I cut it will sort of grow and they'll look awesome, we hope. Okay, so there's that one. And then the hot dog bun. Do you wanna try the, doing the hot dog bun? Why don't sure. you try doing it? Okay, I'll explain it as we go. So you start in the middle and you press back and forth and you're kind of like pushing it into the counter. Sure. Just in the middle, yeah? You're kind of pushing it into the counter and trying to make it skinny in the middle. Like that? Yeah, kind of like that. You can, and it's okay to travel. You can add some travel to it. Let me see if I can get into the light a little better. Do you see how I'm going back and forth? You don't want to go so far that it that it um, that it breaks in the middle, but you yeah. kind of want to go close to that. So um, now with both hands, you can kind of make it even. Ooh, that's looking good, and that's perfect. That's about it. That's about all you have to do for a hot dog bun. If it's a little bit big on the end, it's okay. Just push there just a little bit and leave the middle untouched and it'll sort of even itself out a little bit. So I think that's pretty good for a hot dog bun. I mean, it depends on how big of a hot dog you want. That's a little over six and I think that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna put this on the tray. 
Make sure that if you're, you, if you're gonna bake it on a tray like this, make sure that if you're doing a full tray of hot dogs that you spray the sidewalls because as they proof, and they will proof, um, they will absolutely stick to the pan. So take some pan spray or some butter and just psh, 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 around that. And as you tray them up, actually maybe these are almost soft enough that I could do one. Let me do a couple more just so I can show you. Um, how to distribute them. A little bit more, they're not quite into that zone where they wanna stretch, but we're gonna force them. Okay, so in terms of distribution, that's what I wanted to show you. You leave about a half, a half to three quarters of an inch in between, and then they will proof into one another as you saw them uh, when they went into the oven. Okay. So there's that. The one other thing that I'll show you um, is maybe just a quick pretzel shape. Yeah. So for a pretzel shape, let's see here. I would try and go kind of long. Depends on what kind of pretzel you like. You, if you want to have, I mean, this is um, obviously. It's just a pretzel shape. I'm not doing a lye bath uh, or I'm not boiling them like some people do. I'm just gonna show you the shape because these are pretty good actually if you just egg wash them and then put a little bit of um, pretzel salt on them. So, it's just basically like that. On the King Arthur website, we have some pretzel recipes and you can see how to do that, but it's just basically a little egg pretzel. Um, final proof for this can take up to two hours. Oh, here we go. We're almost done. So, final proof for that can take up to two hours. Let me just peek and see. Uh, can you do another five, Arlo? That's five. What did you start with? Fourteen. Fourteen, so five. That'll take us up to twenty. That should be plenty. Um, okay, I'm going to do that in a second. Maybe I'll do this loaf real quickly now. Can you grab me one of those plastic bags and put it over those rolls for me, Arlo? I have more in. Here you go. Just cover those. Um, during the proof, you've got to make sure everything is covered. Um, during the proof period, you have to make sure that everything is covered. If it dries out, it will not rise to its potential, and you'll have uh, an edible thing, but it won't be as beautiful as it could be, and I think that that's um, worth shooting for. So... Um, I'm going to show you how to do the hala, or at least to braid a three strand the way that I like to do it. Uh, I'm just thinking if there's anything else I should say about that. Maybe not. Okay. So these are the strands that um, have been divided and then were relaxing for a while. And here's a tip. Um, you can divide these and pre-shape them, and then you can cover them. And then you can go to the store. You can go run some errands uh, if that's appropriate for your area, I guess, right now. Uh, but may, or maybe you go walk the dog. Um, they can hang out in this pre-shaped form for a long time. Um, many professional uh, bakeries, maybe many bakeries, um, will chill those covered overnight, uh, even. If they're dead cold, they take a little bit longer during the final proof, but it gives you some flexibility so you're not uh, a bread hostage. Okay. So the shaping method for these is about the same as it was for um, anything else that's elongated. And I just go slow and go back and forth. And the recipe will give you one three, stand, three strand or four strand, whatever you end up doing, loaf. Um, I do a slightly smaller, um, I do a slightly smaller um, loaf weight and then I get a few rolls out of it. So I did these strands at 186 grams each. I know that sounds random, but it makes a 560 gram loaf roughly. And that's just kind of a, a size that I'm used to doing with my hands. Uh, and we want about a 20 inch strand. And so I got lucky, uh, I must have done that before, okay. And then another one. Do you want to do one of these? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I think you should. Okay, you do it while I do it. Wait, so. 
So mash it all the way down to the size that you want it to be, the diameter that you want it to be at its final point, basically. So get it down, yep. So I'm keeping my, keep your hand on the bench and roll back and forth so that you're applying that pressure nice and even. That's good. And then you do, so now you got the dog bone. Okay, that's looking good. So now let's trade. And you're gonna take my dog bone, I'm gonna take your dog bone. And then, and then we go to the um, sort of the ends and we go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a round motion, it's just straight back and forth. Straight back and forth. Yep, yep. So keep your hands on the bench. And this goes for baguettes too, folks. If you're shaping baguettes, heel and fingers on the bench. Uh, so heel and fingers, listen to the sound. You can even hear the sound of my hands on the bench, right? Yep. Okay, you work on that for a second. I'm gonna work on mine for a second. Kind of got our bench space like kind of jammed up here, don't we? Definitely. Okay. All right, so you're pretty much there. Let me just finish it. Sorry to do that. Let me just finish it because we're kind of out of space. Nice and even. Check them in a second. I think that's probably pretty good. Uh, you don't measure every one that you do. You measure one and then eventually you measure none because you just kind of know what the gig is. Okay. I like to have just a little bit of taper at the very end. So I like to make it just slightly pointy. Uh, not sharply pointed, but a little bit. Okay. Do you want to peek in on those rolls? Yep, there's like three seconds left. Peek in. Yeah, they're looking good. Definitely good. Yeah, yeah, they look good. Maybe they're done, huh? What do you think? Well, I mean, there's Let's 20 look. seconds on the timer, basically. I think those work. Yeah, and I think good. the hot dog buns. Uh, maybe, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, I mean. Looking at sidewalls. I think another two minutes on those. Another two minutes on those. Just watch out, because that turns hot. Okay. So, back to the three strand. I like to make sure that the strands are the same length, like that, right? That looks pretty good. This one's a little bit. I think the other My Awesome Oven. That's the name of this vlog, except it's not, actually. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Three strand. Good catch on the oven turning itself off. That was helpful. Okay. So, this is how... You've done some braiding at school a fair amount, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. no okay. expert, but... Okay, no great. expert. Not yet. All right, well, there's time for that. This is the way that I do a three strand. So, I want them here. This counter is pretty almost sticky. If you find that the three strands are sliding around, you can put something heavy on the one end if you want. But So the way I do it is I start in the middle. I don't start at the end. I just start in the middle. And I'm really only laying these um, across one another. I'm just being kind of, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> I was kind of <laughs> like trying to go, I was going slow and getting all messed up. So do you see how I haven't made that really tight? Come up here on top of them. You can even see that, you can almost see daylight inside the, um, inside the braids, right? You can almost see some daylight in there. Um, and that's what you want. You don't want it to be really tight. So you wanna braid a little bit loosely. So I braid one half the loaf, and then I just turn it over towards myself and I continue like this. And then if you want to do that, and I just look to see that I have them kind of even end to end, and that's it. And then set it in a, um, and then set it in a moist place where it can proof. Set it in a moist place to proof. Are they good? Are they good? Um, I don't know. Let's see here. A little more now. I think they're close enough because we might decide that we want to take them. So Arlo, will you put maybe a 10 minute timer on there? 
Ten minutes. I think ten minutes for the polish should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. Okay. Now, uh, I want to show you one more thing that you can do, and you can do this with a lot of different yeasted doughs. The ones that are really good especially are things like brioche and challah milk dough or panda mie works really well too. So what I did was I took a 200 gram round, uh, piece of dough and I um, just sort of rounded it a little bit and then I let it relax half an hour to an hour and then I took a rolling pin and I rolled it out as best I could and then um, and I put it into this form and I let it rest for another half an hour or so and it starts to proof. And so, let's see what we got here. I'm working around the edge and I'm pushing the dough up this 10 inch tart shell. I think it's a 10 inch tart shell. Yeah, it's, oh, it's nine and a half exactly. You could do this in a pie pan too. You can do this in a pie pan as well. Okay. Me. got here um, and I have some like wilted roasted kale you could put pretty much anything you want in there thanks buddy that's okay it's just saying that it's hot it's saying feed me <laughs> a little bit of that and I've got some roasted onions as well and these are all salted and peppered so I don't need to really add anything else yet or now. And this is kind of like topping a pizza except heavier. You just kind of do it to taste. There's no magic number here. And then I've got some uh, Vermont cheddar. Mm, it's a lot no, of cheese. It's gonna be a lot of cheese. It's good. Looks good, right? Okay. And then this is three eggs and a half cup of, uh, this is three eggs and one half cup of milk or cream. I used cream because I had some. And we'll see, these are eggs from our chickens and they're very big. They're like almost 20% bigger than your normal 50 gram egg. So I'm probably not gonna use everything. We'll go up here. Actually, maybe I am gonna use everything. So again, three eggs. Half cup of cream, salt and pepper, um, and that's ready to go in. Do I need to do any more shaping there? No, I don't. Okay. So, and that'll bake for about half an hour or so. Arlo, will you? Are you comfortable putting it in, or maybe you open it and I'll put it in there? Oh, this is looking pretty good. I think I could have done a little bit better job with my braiding on that, but. Um, I'm not going to fret about that. Okay, so the only thing left that I have to show, I think is the mix, right? So let's do the mix. Um, will you set those on the tray over there and we'll shape them after we're finished. Okay. Got this big bowl that everybody likes. Um, Set up. Man, those rolls smell insanely good. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, this is the mix. Now, listen. Um, challah does not have a lot of water in it. It's important that all of these ingredients are at least at room temperature, at least at 72 or 74 degrees. Don't take the eggs out of the uh, refrigerator and then expect your dough to come off at a temperature which is warm and which is conducive to a good rise. So set yourself up for success during the rise by making sure that your ingredients are at least at room temperature and that the water is warm. I got warm water and then I just put it into a thermos because I didn't want it to cool while I talked too much <laughs> about this. Okay, so um, flour, yeast, salt, those go in the bowl. And just like everything else, we've been trying to do all of our work by hand just because some people don't have a mixer. And you, for most things, you don't really need a mixer. We're talking about doing brioche, and I really prefer brioche out of the... Um, I prefer brioche with a stand mixer or a mixer of some sort. I think it does a little bit better. But 
You want to give a peek at that haul line? Just make sure that we don't need to do anything or... It's getting pretty close. It's getting yeah. pretty close. Okay. That means that we're close to running out of time here. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is honey and oil. Actually, it's supposed to be honey and oil. And because we have like four batches going today, I ran out of honey. And so we borrowed some of mom's um, agave syrup. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, should be fine. Okay, and this is my water, which is hopefully still warm. And water goes in. You don't necessarily need to combine these beforehand, but I'm just making sure that everybody's in good shape there. I have a feeling that this dough is gonna come off a little bit cooler than I want. I would really like it to come off like 78 to 80 degrees um, if we're just doing two hours of bulk. So we'll see. I bet that it's probably gonna be in the low to mid 70s, which means that we're gonna to wanna to try and find a nice warm place for it to rise until it's what? Until it's ready. puffy. What they said? Puffy. I think that was the descriptor, which was yes. a good description. Okay. I like this big bowl. Uh, we got a bunch of big bowls. I mean, this one is probably bigger. It's a little bit of overkill. But it's one of those things that I bought without seeing it and didn't really know. And then I got it and I was like, oh, wow, that's big. I think we have some pictures of you guys like playing in this these bowls when you were kids. Probably small enough to fit inside. Small it. enough to fit inside, absolutely. I like to do what I can in the bowl before I turn it out. So I'm just sort of smearing it to see that all the ingredients are homogenous. And then I'll turn it out. I need it a little bit maybe. Okay, set that aside. We'll use that same bowl for bulk fermentation. Do you want to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of kneading? Sure. Can I get it started and then I'll have you take over? Go okay, ahead. Okay, awesome. Are you just like smearing against the counter? Yep. So what I will do actually, you know what buddy? I think okay. it's good to go. I think we're just gonna leave it right there. It's great. And then what I'm gonna do is come back and I'm gonna cover it and then I'm gonna come back and knead it for a few minutes in just a second. I think that's pretty much good. Why don't we try, I'm gonna wash my hands real quickly, and why don't you, the hollow is very close, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Why don't you turn that oven off for me? So that gives us like 27 minutes, I think. 27 to 30 minutes, somewhere right around there. Um, and... I'm excited to try these rolls. Yeah, the rolls really are gonna good. be good. So, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think that we could have gotten a little bit more. It was even, maybe it could have proofed even just a titch longer, but I'm pretty happy with that. Let's try a roll. You oh, want yeah. one? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Get this out of the way. There's like a pocket here. Yeah, there's a little pocket there. Yeah. They're kind of cute, huh? Definitely. Well, cheers to you. And let's say thanks to everybody and thanks to Anthem for filming today. Yes, definitely. Um, Hall is a versatile dough. You can make breakfast, lunch, and dinner with one mix. Um, we're glad that you could join us. It's almost week three of self-isolation, and you can look for the tag, hashtag bake with us uh, and see everything that's going on at King Arthur Flour uh, and in our homes as, as well. And we hope that you and yours uh, enjoy some of this baking from our house today. Cheers. Wow. Smells great. Mmm. Smells really good. Know. Oh yeah. Even more cheese will be fine. Yeah. You can make a hot dog now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cheers. Thank you.